tell me a little bit about Austin. We're trying to, to get to know him. To get to know Austin would be explaining for days. My only child coming into this world, kicking and screaming in a hurry. Went through life in a hurry, loving, laughing, mischievous. Always had to be the jokester, always. Floated in and out of every crowd, very protective of everybody that he loved. All-American typical boy. So the day of the wreck, let's talk a little bit about the events leading up. School got out at 12.30 that day. You know, last day of school, summer break, um, had a summer job lined up. He come out to the house and he was with three other boys. One of them was the driver. I walked back outside with him and I was like, you know, you boys behave, have a good night, have fun. And one of the last things that was said to me from Austin was, Mom, I love you. The other boys I didn't know really well, Ethan, the last words out of his mouth was, nothing's going to happen to your boy on my watch. What do you remember about the wreck? We passed on a no passing zone. We passed our friends. And when we passed, he like overcorrected twice. And uh, that's when we were started to roll. Uh, right about where we are here now is where the uh, vehicle came to rest after uh, coming around the curve at a high rate of speed. I would say it was running between 80 and 85 miles per hour, roughly. I remember like the sounds of everything, like it was, it was crazy. And uh, I blacked out going out the window and then whenever I was laying on the ground, it, it felt like it was all quiet at first for a little bit and then like you could hear her like way in the background like making noises. Uh, the vehicle was here on its side. Uh, there were several items strode across the road, uh, tools. There was an ice chest laying on the side of the road up there. Uh, there were beer cans all over the place, as well as uh, four other individuals needing immediate medical attention. Austin was approximately 65 feet from where the truck came to rest at to where his body came to rest. And in this situation, it was uh, pretty dramatic injuries and pretty uh, gruesome visual. What my job is is to, to to find out cause and manner of death. The cause of death was uh, severe head trauma in this, in this case. I got a phone call a little bit before 11 that there had been a wreck they thought somewhere on 160, which is where we live. And I couldn't reach Austin. And the minute that I couldn't reach him, it was like something had been ripped out of me. Uh, whenever Miss Elliot arrived, I was, I was here, I was actually assisting the EMS crews. I, I observed her arrive. Uh, one of the Missouri Highway Patrol officers, troopers made contact with Miss Elliot and advised her that, that her son had died in the accident. I remember being grabbed and just fighting to want to get over there to him. And they said, ma'am, he's gone. We have arrested the driver under the suspicion of drinking and driving. Miss Elliot fell to the ground crying, screaming. Uh, it was a very, very traumatic deal for her. I don't remember much after that other than what they told me. One of the girls in the wreck says, her nightmares are my screams. I wasn't able to reach Austin's father till about four in the morning. Our son meant the world to us. We adored and cherished and loved him so much to have to tell him that our baby was gone. <laughs> One of the hardest things I've ever had to do in my life. You um, mentioned as we were walking that there were beer cans all over. Was it pretty evident when you first got here that alcohol probably played a role in this accident? Yes, ma'am, absolutely. Several of the teenagers that I came into close contact with when assisting EMS, I smelled that off of them as well. So it was a very, very 
obvious fact that alcohol played a key role in this tragic event. I couldn't tell whenever they picked me up that he was like intoxicated. He, he like, wasn't that bad when we picked her up. Yeah, okay. he wasn't bad at all. So then was he drinking between the time you picked her up and the wreck? Mm -hmm. Yeah. The days immediately following, what do you remember about that time? Wanting to know how these children got that alcohol? Who gave it to them? Has that question been answered since? Yes, it's been answered. Two different adults, a 22-year-old and a 50-year-old, bought the driver of the truck alcohol. What would you say to parents that, that allow drinking? Stop, don't be their friend. Be their parent. Remind them every day. I thought I reminded mine often enough. I guess that I didn't. It's something that I'll question myself for the rest of my life. What could I have done? What did I not do as a parent? for him to get into a vehicle with a friend knowing that he had been drinking. Our life revolves around them, wondering what they're gonna become, helping them, molding them, teaching them. I'll never get to see him graduate high school, fall in love, get married, have grandchildren. I'll never get to see any of that. So now, I have to learn to relive life in a way that I never thought that I would have to. I never want another parent to ever experience what I have. Stop, don't be their friend, be their parent. Because you could be me.